Okay. What is associative memory and how does it work? Well, associative memory is what is uh, basically the majority of what your subconscious mind is and what your subconscious mind does. Associative memory is a link between a person, place, or thing coupled with an emotion. And a sense of neurons is where the um, actual touching of one dendrite to another and that contact creating a flow of images, thoughts, emotions to create what is called a cognitive module or um, a thought pattern. Now, NLP talks about breaking thought patterns as well as um, using uh, different uh, techniques like anchoring or um, states and modules to uh, break these patterns um, of associative memory. Uh, and what it really is, again, is a balance between what is pain and what is pleasure to the subconscious mind. Associative memory is the most important thing as to why we behave the way we behave. Somebody who has a problem overeating generally has made an association between food and a feeling of pleasure. It's a pretty simple thing to understand when put in that particular form of language. Associative memory is what hypnotists and uh, other NLP practitioners use to help people overcome problems like that. Um, associative memory is the character of who you are, the identity, the social mask, who you are as a conscious being. Uh, so it's an incredibly important thing to understand. We happen to be at this particular time getting ready for an election. And as I go through the YouTube things and, and look at different people's perspectives and things of that nature, it's pretty interesting to notice how people attach to, say, a, a story without really ever getting into whether the story is real or not, uh, to see if there's a differing opinion and um, looking into that opinion to see whether or not they're truly right. There is no there is no way of convincing somebody whose mind is set, is formed in associative memory and identity and a social mask in order to, if you will, protect their ego. Um, there's no way of, of giving them any kind of words or anything of that nature in order to get them to change, really, their tr true belief systems. Um, we talk about swing states, we talk. We can talk about all kinds of things in, in the form of, of how the national politics has, has come up and realistically speaking you cannot in any way shape or form really get people to believe differently without affecting their associative memory. And one of the most interesting things that I've seen, um, a lot of people don't uh, really understand uh, the power of television and the power of the hypnotic trance that television creates. Many scientists believe that two-thirds of the time that you're watching television, you're actually in the first two or three stages of hypnosis. So you're being programmed, and it just depends on how good the different people are that you're watching as far as their ability to program you. Now, some people get outraged and upset by watching something like Bill O'Reilly, who uh, is fantastic at what's called in NLP the pattern break. In other words, instead of doing a report like a reporter would normally do, he asks a question, usually a closed-ended question, in an attempt to get an answer that he specifically wants. If they deviate from the path, he interrupts them. That's a pattern interrupt. Um, uh, there's another gentleman, there's actually a lot of people on Fox that are actually very good at doing this specific thing. And I've been watching them and how they do what they do and it's very interesting. I've seen other guys who know NLP who are in the same business I am of hypnosis who also break down how these, I'd call them gentlemen, but they're really not gentlemen at all. They're, uh, they're getting paid a lot of money because they know how to use neuro-linguistic programming. They know how to do things like pattern breaks and hand signals and uh, things of that nature. I'm checking to make sure that um, 
you realize that I'm anchoring you right now in the idea that I know what I'm talking about. Um, I do this with clients to help them in the sense of building rapport so that I can get them to make a behavioral change. Um, I'm actually, luckily I'm, I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. Um, I'm a registered independent who uh, uh, doesn't ever talk about politics when I'm talking about business because it is so important for everyone to know how their mind works and why they think the way they do. And you can go to either the extremes and see fanaticism. It occurs in religion, it occurs in politics, it occurs in basically every sociological event, you know, sexuality and things of this nature. It is, quite literally, your associative memory. Associations that you picked up as your subconscious mind was building your identity. Between the ages of 0 and 12, all of us build our associative memory. At the age of 12 or thereabouts, but many scientific tests, um, especially a new one that, that happened to be published in a scientific magazine that I get, um, shows quite dramatically that um, through MRIR, MRI research that um, associative memory really stops being built to a large degree and your identity becomes whole, and you begin to act out of your identity at the age of 12. Now, it varies a little bit for other people. You know, some develop faster, some develop slower, but the age of 12 is a really big cutoff date for, for psychologists and people that do behavioral change like me um, and a professional hypnotist. Um, what this means is that if you can become aware of your own thoughts and understand why you think the way you do, then you can make changes in your life that are really a kind of evolution within yourself that leads you in the direction that you're consciously wanting to go. But without being able to break your associative memory, without being able to make new associations, something called neural learning, we've known about for many, many years, um, without being able to integrate things through the use of hypnosis, through the use of, um, of the things that Bandler and, and Grinder came up with in, in neuro-linguistic programming, through those types of, of understandings, you will continue to follow the same patterns, whether it takes you to self-destruction or whether it takes you to total elation. Without breaking those patterns and moving yourself where you consciously want to go, then what is really running the show back here, the subconscious mind, is going to take you where the programming takes you. Um, I was a little disappointed to find out that Paul McKenna's show is not being aired on TV, or at least I can't find it on TV. I don't know. I don't own the TV, actually, but I, I use YouTube in order to find the things that I want, obviously. If it were on TV, they would have put it on YouTube as well, because all of Paul McKenna's work is, is pretty much on YouTube. Um, but to understand, to see firsthand how hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming works, and how you can change people's lives, how you can make somebody who is an alcoholic no longer uh, an alcoholic, how you can transform um, people into being something more than their programming allows them to be and kind of take that box of thoughts and break it open and say now what is it that you consciously want and I'll put it in your mind and let you run with it in the direction you really want to go safely and easily um, that's what I do every day that's what I do um, I, I you know thank God for this opportunity uh, to help people and was looking forward to saying something about associative memory and how important it is for people to understand that their mind runs like a computer, that they can't break thoughts without intervening somehow, and that there's tools and techniques out there that 
people like me and the other fantastic hypnotists that are on YouTube, are willing to share with you if your mind is open enough to accept what science has proven to be true. Thank you.